What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Zay Mula Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Isaiah. Thank you very much. And on today's episode, we have another 2024 NFL Draft Scouting Report. And today, man, we have the man, the myth, and the soon-to-be legend, Marvin Harrison Jr., son of NFL Hall of Fame wide receiver Mar- Marvin Harrison Sr. Y'all, let me tell you something. Marvin Harrison Jr. is probably the best wide receiver pro- prospect I've ever scouted. Woo, I mean, this kid, oh my gosh, man. This kid is definitely, definitely, definitely a straight-up monster. He's a straight-up beast. And let's get into it, y'all. So, wide receiver, six foot four, 205 pounds. You look at his 2023 stats, 67 catches, 1,211 yards, 14 touchdowns, amazing production. And I know some people will say, well, Zay, he played in the Big Ten. The Big Ten is not even that good. All you have is Michigan and Penn State. Bro, I don't care. This dude is freaking uh, uh, amazing. And you talking about Michigan and Penn State, man. Penn State has a corner by the name of Kalen King, um, who's projected to be a first uh, to second round pick that went against Marvin Harrison Jr. So let's not make it seem like Marvin Harrison Jr. did not go against uh, some pretty good competition because he did, but he was just tearing them dudes up because he's on a different level. <laughs> so let's get into his strengths, man. He is an amazing and new ounce route runner. Y'all, Marvin Harrison Jr. is the best route runner in the country. He's the best route runner in this draft. I mean, literally, I think he's the best route. Just, I think he's the best route runner receiver currently. I really do. I, I mean, he's, Man, this y'all. I'm, <laughs> I mean, his route running is very reminiscent, very, very, very reminiscent of Amari Cooper, where everything just looks so smooth. He makes everything look so effortless. He's a guy that can run a full route tree, man. I mean, he can run the entire route tree, and everything just comes so easy to him, man. He, this is a guy that was born to play wide receiver. You see some dudes. They play wide receiver. You look at the way they run routes, man. You're like, oh, they don't run it as crisp. They don't look as sharp when they run their routes. Or they turn the wrong way, right? Or they cut in on the route when they're supposed to break out. They break in when they're supposed to cut in. But with Marvin Hitchcock, he never does that. He never runs the wrong routes. None of that is a problem with him because this dude is a freaking beast at running routes. And again, obviously his father is an NFL Hall of Famer, Marvin Harrison Sr., but still, Junior, man, he has it in him as well. His route running is the same. Like I said, y'all, he might be the best. And this is obviously this is up for debate. He might be the best route runner just in the country, like period. College and NFL. I know that's a lot. They're saying a lot. But y'all, there's not too many dudes currently in the NFL that's a better route runner than him. Let's be honest. I mean, Amari Cooper's great. Keenan Allen's great. Justin Jefferson's great. Jamar Chase is great. There's not too many dudes currently in the NFL. That are amazing route runners. Right? We got a lot of great receivers, but not all receivers are like great route runners. But Marvin Harrison Jr., man, oh my gosh, his route running is elite, y'all. Elite. So that's his first year. He's an amazing new out route runner. Like I said, everything comes so easy for him. He makes it look so effortless. He's just a very, very, very smooth player. And nothing's forced, man. You see some guys, y'all, play receivers, and you can just tell that they're trying to force themselves to learn routes. You can just tell they're trying to force themselves to run this route over him. He doesn't have to do that because he already possesses those skills to be an amazing route runner. His second strip, man, elite separation off the line of scrimmage. And a lot of this, y'all, kind of ties into this, this next up strength. Uses his six foot four frame and length well on 50 50 balls. Now, you look at the elite separation off the line of scrimmage. Why is he able to do that? Well, it's because that six foot frame that I just mentioned, right? So he's six foot four, long arms. And tying in, see all this stuff kind of ties together, doesn't it? And because of his route running, he's able to just as soon like if you press him, boom, he's going right by you. Marvin Harrison Jr. is going right by you. This is not a dude that's one of them big tall dudes, man. It's like a Kevin White or a, a Kevin Benjamin, somebody like that. No, those guys they rely more on their size. Marvin Harrison Jr. relies more what? feet y'all he relies on his feet y'all hear me he relies on his feet so it's different you look at some tall receivers man they just rely on what y'all on their, on their physicality on their height no Marvin Harrison Jr. relies on his feet so boom if you try to jam him y'all he gonna 
gonna cross you up, boom, he's gonna get right by you. He gets right by you, man. He gets elite separation off the line of scrimmage. Elite separation off the line of scrimmage. You cannot press this kid at all because if you do, he's going by you. He is going by you. And the thing is, you can't put a small corner on Marvin Hitch Jr. Why? Because phys- uh, 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 from a physical standpoint, they won't be able to keep up. And you can't put, put really put a bigger corner on him. Why? Because the bigger corner probably doesn't have the speed that he possesses. So you can just not, you can not press this guy at all. You cannot. Again, y'all, I saw him go against Kalen King. Kalen King is a really good player. He could not touch Marvin Harris Jr. whatsoever. He could not touch him, y'all. He could not touch this kid at all. That shows you a lot. A guy, a Kalen King, that's projected to be a first, second round pick, couldn't do anything with Marvin Harrison Jr. Why? Because Marvin Harrison Jr., man, he gets a lead separation off the line of scrimmage. And there's nothing you can do about it. Because he beats you in that phone booth, as we like to call it. He's going to beat you in a phone booth. Again, like I said, he uses his feet, y'all. He uses his feet. He's not one of these tall receivers. Let me say this again. He's not one of those tall receivers that just solely you uh, relies on his height. No, he relies on his feet, and that allows him to get that elite separation. And then with his amazing route running, it's nothing you can do with him. As I mentioned earlier, look at the best route runners in the league. Look at Keenan Allen and Amari Cooper. You see the separation that they get. And I think Marvin Hitch Jr., he's faster than Keenan Allen and Amari Cooper. But... All three of those guys possess elite route running skills. And when you got an elite route runner, it's going to be, or excuse me, when you are an elite route runner at the wide receiver position, it's going to make life very, very easy for you. So if wide receiver, or excuse me, if corners want to press you, they're not going to be able to, to do that, right? Because you possess crazy route running skills. And then on top of that, if you're a Marvin Harrison Jr. and you also have some good speed to you, it makes it even more difficult. Elite separation, man, off the line of scrimmage. His next strength, I kind of touched on it. He uses his 6'4 frame and length well on 50-50 balls. This is the guy, man. He's not like Traylon Burks, y'all. Okay, y'all know Traylon Burks plays my tennis guy. He's not like Traylon Burks, no. Marvin Harris Jr. knows how to use his height well. Like I said a few seconds ago, he doesn't just rely on his height, but he does know uh, how to use his 6'4 frame well and length well on 50-50 balls. This is the guy, like I said, you cannot put a small corner on him because a small corner is not going to really be able to slow him down, especially in 50-50 balls because, man, he's 6'4", he has long arms, and he's great at high point in the ball. You look at some tall receivers, y'all, they're not great at high point in the ball. Look at Traylon Burks. Traylon Burks is, is not great at, point, at high point in the ball. You look at Tyreek Hill, though. Tyreek Hill's on, what, 5'9", five, 5'10", five, but he's a spectacular at high point in the football. So it's not just on your height, but Marvin Jr. knows how to use his height well. He knows how to, sh- uh, to shield off DBs, go up in the air, boom, snatch it out, and you can't do nothing about it. I love that. And I love wide receivers, man, that are 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", that know how to use their height well on 50-50 balls because there are some that don't. And like I said, Traylon Burks, one of the Traylon Burks, 6'2", 6'3", he cannot high point the football whistle. He's not a great 50-50 ball guy. He's not a great jump ball guy. I really don't even think, honestly, and I, again, I love Traylon Burks and he plays for my Titans, but being honest with y'all, I don't even think Traylon Burks really, he possesses the skills to be able to high point the football. I don't think he has the best hand. Marvin Hitch Jr., you don't have to worry about that. He has elite hands. And again, like I said, y'all, this is a guy that just was born to play wide receiver. You can tell everything he does. But yes, I love that he uses his 6'4 frame and lifts well on 50-50 balls, on high point balls, jump balls, whatever you want to call them. I love that he's able to do that because there are some wide receivers that are tall and cannot do that. But Marvin Hitch Jr. can. His next year, man, he's very fast for a wide receiver his size. I mean, you're talking about a dude that's probably going to run like 4-3-5 maybe or something like that. Maybe 4-4, 4-4-1, 4-4-2. Y'all, that is extremely fast. For a dude that's 6'4", 205 pounds, I mean, y'all, that is incredibly fast. Incredibly fast. So how do you stop a guy? This is like, almost like Julio Jones. I mean, how do you stop a guy, y'all, that's 6'4", 205 pounds, that's an amazing route runner, that's able to get elite separation, and then he also can blow by you? 
He's a burner. He has great speed to him. I mean, my goodness. This is like your dream wide receiver right here, y'all. Like, seriously, this is your dream wide receiver. And then his last strength, as I kind of touched on a little bit earlier, phenomenal ball skills. I mean, y'all, this dude has great awareness. I love that. Right? I love a wide receiver to have great awareness on, on when to, hey, the ball is coming my way. Let me uh, let me uh, go and get it. Right? I see some wide receivers, y'all. Not going to call them my name. But I see some wide receivers, they have terrible ball skills. They don't even know when the ball is in the air. They'll, they'll show their hands too early. And that's another thing. Marvin Harris Jr., when he doesn't show his hands early, which is very rare for a receiver, especially his age. I mean, he's so young. But he's already mastered not to show your hands to the DB too early, which gives him yet another advantage. But, yes, he has amazing, amazing, amazing ball skills. And, again, when you're six foot four, you would think you have great ball skills. But everybody does it, y'all. Everybody at this height does not have great ball skills. Trust me. He does. Marvin Harris Jr., great ball skills. So, you, let's get into his weaknesses, y'all. And I really can only find two, two weaknesses in this kid. I mean, he does not have that many weaknesses. And even these weaknesses aren't even, like, big, big, big weaknesses. But, you know, I had to give him a couple weaknesses. So, his first weakness, his run blocking, sort of. The reason I put sort of is because I don't even think it's from a lack of effort. I think looking at the tape, Marvin Harrison Jr. actually will – uh, uh, put forth the effort to help out in the blocking game. I just think his technique needs a little work, right? I think he needs to learn how to really, like, put his hands to the, to the uh, DBs and, like, just boom, just go after them, right? I think sometimes Marvin Harris Jr., I think sometimes he's too worried, y'all, that he might get called for a flag because, you know, when you're a bigger guy, right, you're six foot four. there's not too many corners that are six foot four. There's not too many corners that can match you height for height. I think sometimes Marvin Harris Jr., he gets a little too concerned and the referee's going to call him for a flag. So he's maybe not as aggressive as he should be and say, well, at least this guy was, and say somebody like a George Pickens. Like, right, George Pickens coming out of the draft, that was something that a lot of people loved about him. That man, he was so aggressive as a run blocker. He would literally shove dudes out of the way. I think Marvin Harris Jr., just, he needs to learn how to do that. But again, he'll put forth the effort, though. That is not a problem. Marvin Harris Jr., definitely, 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 puts forth the effort and run blocking and run blocking is is it is excuse me it is important as a wide receiver now is it the most important thing no but it's definitely important right it's definitely important you got to be able to run block marvin Harris jr can let me say this y'all he can run block he puts forth the effort i just think it's a little bit of more technique um again just really putting his hands into the db's uh, uh chest and just boom just going at him especially when he has a smaller guy on him. But again, he puts forth the effort. So I'm not too concerned about this because it's not uh, from a lack of effort, right? Like like I said, George Pickens coming out of draft, which that was something that a lot of people liked about him, his run block. Also, we saw this past season with the Pittsburgh Steelers, what happened with that? <laughs> but also, look, you look at a guy like DK Metcalf, right? DK is about 6'3", 6'4", about 225, 230 pounds, right? So he's a little bit bigger than Marvin Harris Jr. in terms of weight, but they both have similar, uh, uh, similar statues. DK is a great run blocker, right? He knows how to use his size to his advantage. And his and in terms of technique as, as a run blocker, it's, it's there. It's very, very good. Again, Marvin Harris Jr., he shows the effort. So I'm not worried about this at all, but I have to put it down for right now. And then his second and last weakness, in my opinion, is his yard at the catch ability. Y'all, let me tell you something. This does not matter at all. Like, seriously, this doesn't matter. You look at some of the best receivers of all time, y'all. They were not Tyreek Hill after the catch. That's okay. They were not Jamar Chase after the catch. Larry Fitzgerald, was Larry Fitzgerald a, a great yak guy? No. Was the Is DeAndre Hopkins a great yard after catch guy? No. Was Jerry Rice a great yard after catch guy? No, not great. It's okay. You don't have to be great. You don't have to have great yak ability, y'all. That doesn't. That, you can still be a successful wide receiver without being a great yard after catch guy. And I don't even think Marvin Harrison Jr. is bad. And I just think, of course, 
you look at a guy his his size, right? Six foot four. He's not gonna be the shiftiest of guys, right? He's not gonna be able to. He's not gonna be like an Antonio Brown, uh, a Jamar Chase, right? Some of these smaller guys, a Tyreek Hill, just to name a few. He's not gonna be like them. And again, this is not even a big weakness in my opinion. I, I don't think y'all, in my opinion, this is not even a big weakness. But I know some people are like, well, Zay, you said he's the greatest and all this, and Marvin Harrison Jr. is the best wide receiver you've ever seen. So shouldn't he do everything at an all-time grade level? No. But it's okay because he does so much other stuff at an elite level. But no, he's not a great yard after catch guy. But am I worried about that? Absolutely not. Because I've seen plenty of receivers in this NFL, some that's currently still playing. Keenan Allen is another one that comes to my mind. Keenan Allen is not a great yard after the catch guy. But, man, his route running is amazing. His separation is amazing. His ball skills are amazing. His hands are amazing. So who cares? Really? Like, let's be honest, y'all. Who really cares? Yard, yard after catch ability. Okay, whatever. Whatever, man. <laughs> whatever. That's not the biggest uh, thing. Uh, that's important when it comes to being an NFL wide receiver. It's just not, right? It's not. So this is not a big weakness, but it is a weakness. I know for some of y'all out there, it's going to be a weakness. But for me, it's a weakness, but it's not anything that would derail him from having a great career. So let's get into his pro comparison, his prospect grade, and then we'll get on out of here. So, y'all, his pro comparison. It's three guys for me. Amari Cooper, A.J. Green, Julio Jones. Amari Cooper in terms of route running. A.J. Green in terms of size and 50-50 ball uh, ability. And Julio Jones, speed for a guy his size. The toughness and strength. That's my pro comparison for Marvin Hitch Jr. I think he's three and one, y'all. I think he's Amari Cooper, AJ Green, and Julio Jones. All in one. All in one. Seriously. Let me repeat. Amari Cooper, route running. AJ Green, size, 50-50 ball ability. And Julio Jones also size, but size, uh, speed, strength, toughness, and physicality. Right, you look at a a, a guy in Marvin Harrison Jr. Man, there's not too many dudes y'all that's six foot four that's fast like that. You know, DK Metcalf Osley is another guy. Julio Jones, as I uh, gave him my uh, gave him uh, my pro comparison. Right, but there's not too many guys like Marvin Harrison Jr. So that's my pro comparison for him. Prospect grade ninety nine, y'all ninety nine ninety nine. Generational prospect, future Hall of Famer. And some of y'all are gonna say, Hey, this is too high. I'm telling y'all, this kid has it. I really, 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 really do believe y'all that this this guy definitely, I would say the last 10 and 15 years, he's the best wide receiver prospect that I've scouted. We had a lot of great ones now. We had a lot of great ones. One being A.J. Green, Amari Cooper, Julio Jones, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. We've had a lot of great ones, y'all. But this dude, I think this dude, is, he's, something, he's something else. He's different, man. He is different. I truly believe this guy is a generational prospect. I really do believe. You know, we, th we say generational prospect. We talk about Andrew Love. We talk about Trevor Lawrence. You know, a lot of people said last year, Jalen Carter, he was a generational prospect. A lot of people said Von Miller, Patrick Peterson, those guys were generational prospects. Cam Newton, some people thought he was. I think Marvin Harris Jr., man, he's up there with him, y'all. This kid is a generational prospect, future Hall of Fame type player. I really, 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 really believe that. So, my conclusion for Marvin Harris Jr. Harrison Jr. is one of the best and most unique wide receivers we've ever seen. He has all the tools in his toolbox to become an all-time great wide receiver. Expect him to come in the league and demoralize cornerbacks for years to come. Y'all, this kid, I think, I think by next year, y'all, 
I don't think his rookie year, and he might. But I think by his second season, people will say he's the best wide receiver in football. I really do believe that. I think by his second year, we will be saying Marvin Harrison Jr. might be the best receiver in football. And I know, man, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, elite wide receivers in the league right now. The talent that wide receiver is so deep. And I'm telling y'all, if you put on the tape on this kid, you would see why I think this dude has the potential to be a legend. He has the potential to be a top five, top 10 receiver ever in NFL history, a Hall of Fame guy, a gold jacket guy. I really believe that, y'all. If you put on the tape, you put on the film, watch this kid play, you would see. He has everything you would want in the corner. The size, the speed, the physicality, the strength, the toughness, the hands, the route running, the contested catch ability. Oh, and by the way, he also comes from good stop. Why? Because his dad, Marvin Harrison, Marvin Harrison Sr., excuse me, is an NFL legend himself. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier in the video, NFL Hall of Famer. He's one of the greatest receivers of all time. They're different. Because Marvin Harrison Jr., excuse me, Marvin Harrison Sr. was a shorter guy. Marvin Harrison Jr. is a taller, bigger guy. So they, they, they bring, you know, a different flavor to the game. But I really believe, man, like his dad, Marvin Harrison Jr. will become one of the best receivers in NFL history. This kid, y'all, like I said, I think he's the, he's definitely the best wide receiver I've ever, uh, I've ever scouted. He might be the best player I've ever scouted in general, any position. This dude has everything he needs, man, to become an NFL legend at wide receiver. So, there you have it, man. That was another 2024 NFL Draft Scouting Report. Please, y'all, make sure to add me on Twitch. Zay Mula Sports, all lowercase. Let me repeat. I'm going to put it back up here if y'all – uh <laughs> did not see it please make sure to add me at twitch they lost sports all lowercase let me say it one more time for those of y'all that can't hear please add me on twitch as they move sports all lowercase remember man laughter is good medicine so make sure you get your daily dose y'all know i'm gonna end it man i love y'all god bless pop 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 peace